Greetings Israel and sojourners of Israel. My name is Brother Andrew and today's date is January the 5th, 2022. I'm coming to you from the newly republic of Barbados in the beautiful Eastern Caribbean with this exciting topic, the stolen identity of the Negroes. Again, the topic is the stolen identity of the Negroes. You know, for the past 400 years, the Negro history was only tied to slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. But our history goes back to creation. The Mosai God created two people, Adam and Eve, and they were both Negroes. Our history cannot be written in no Western history book. Our history is written in the Holy Scriptures. The Negroes have lost everything in captivity. They took away his God, his name, his identity, and his faith. And every other thing was stolen from the Negroes in captivity. There are a people from Eastern Europe and Eastern European people who call themselves the children, the true children of the Mosai, the chosen seed from Khazaria, who chose not to be Christian nor Islamic, but they adopt the Hebrew faith and was placed in the land of Israel in 1947 by the United Nations. They were never in slavery. A matter of fact, they took part in the slave trade. And according to Jeremiah 2 and 14, and it says, Jeremiah was asking the Mosai a serious question. He says, is Israel a servant? Is he a home born slave? Why is he always in captivity? Why is he always in slavery? So slavery in the children of Israel, there's always, there was all a connection with slavery and the children of Israel. Every captivity there was on earth, the children of Israel went through, whether it be Babylonian, the Assyrian, and this transatlantic bondage that the Negroes just came through. It is the glass captivity. From here on in now, the Negroes is seeking Zion. There will be no more captivity. So, again, th these Khazars, they are Europeans and they are mixed. They are hybrids. So, there is no hybrid race of people. They are mixed with Neanderthal and there is no hybrid mix of people. Could be the chosen people according to Leviticus 19 and 19. So, yes, the Negroes lost their identity in this transatlantic captivity. Their identity was also confirmed in Psalms 83. Their stolen identity was also confirmed in Psalms 83. The second president of Egypt also confirmed their stolen identity when he went on national tele television and state. In 1952, the Europeans that claiming to be Jews are nothing more than Hebrew speaking Gentiles. This was the late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, and he stated, You Jews will never be able to live here in peace because you left here black and came back white. We cannot accept you. So, what he was saying. He was telling these Europeans that the people that left here with Moses went through the Red Sea into the land of Canaan were black people. Who are you coming back claiming that you are you are the, you are those people? You are imposter. You are not. You are fake. You are not the true children of Israel. You know I was fortunate and blessed to visit Egypt. 
and they went to the Museum of Civilization. And they went through that, that museum, and I have not seen not one European mummy in that museum. All I saw in that museum were black mummies. So it tells me that from the beginning of times, the Negroes occupy this landmass that we call Earth. So we Negroes have to wake up. We got to remember who we are. We got to come back to our God and truly serve Him with sincerity and, with re and, and truth and in righteousness. Because there's many things out there that is, the stack is against us. So we got to depend on our Father. You know, for years we were taught that there is a European looking God beyond the sky. And the reality is, no, there's not. For centuries, Europeans have lived with this false belief that the Creator is a European. First, let me say this. Europeans were the last arrivals on the planet. There was not such a place as Europe or a people as Europeans before the flood. There was only one race of people before the flood. And those people looked like their Creator. They were made in the image and the likeness of their God. And even if the Creator was or is European, would He approve of your evil doing? You should ask yourself this question. The Supreme God is righteous in all His ways. He is not a condoner of evil. And Psalms 5 and 4, we will look at that. And it states, for thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall, evil, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of, iniqu of iniquity. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So, yes, the most I, regardless of if he's Af Af African, European, Asian, what have you. The Mosai is in a class all by himself. He's righteous and he will not condone unrighteousness in no form. You are not better than another person because you have the ability to keep him or her down. Showing that person love, compassion and respect makes you a better person. There is no greater fool than he who fools himself. Yes, my friends, you are living in delusion. You are living a lie. The Creator and His heavenly hosts are not Europeans. Proverbs 14 and 34. Righteousness exalted for nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. You know, St. Sir John Hawkins, he was the first captain of those ships that took our people to the Americas. Sir John Hawkins, Sir John Hawkins could have, re, could have re, rejected his assignment, but he took the low road and so many lives were lost at sea. Those same people that were thrown aboard, or overboard by Sir John Hawkins and his crew will condemn Sir John Hawkins and his crew and all the African chiefs that aided in those six million or more slaves losing their lives on the day of judgment. Eternal damnation is forever. Daniel 12 and 2. And many, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content. We must be mindful of how we live this present life here on earth. There are consequences at the end. Regardless of our ethnicity, we will stand before a righteous judge. Let's look at Psalms 51, 16 and 17. For thou deserve not sacrifice, else will I give it. Though the light is not in burnt offerings, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, 
O God, that will not despise. For I have for I acknowledge my transgression and my sins is ever before me. Yes, we must acknowledge we sin. We must acknowledge we came short. We must acknowledge we did wrong. And we must repent. Sorrowful. Repentance is good. Since you sorry me from your heart, the Mose is obligated to forgive you. He is a righteous God, but he hates sin. He hates evil. The foolish will not stand in his sight. He hates the workers of iniquity. God is not a racist. God is a separatist. And he separated the Negroes from every other nation. So if the Creator was European or is European, and the Europeans are were the last arrivals on earth. What is the most I know? Or should I add, what was the most I before the Europeans arrived? Can the Europeans accept the fact that a God of Daniel, that a God Daniel observed in Daniel 7 and 9 was woolly headed and not blonde headed? Can, European, can Europeans accept the fact that the God that you observe does not look like them? How can we all coexist in this new kingdom that the Moses is going to prepare for us and the Negroes cannot live next to you here on earth? Yes, we all, there is only one kingdom. And we all gonna be coexisting in that kingdom. If you live righteous and you live right, regardless if you're European, if you're Negro, Chinese, we all will be in that one kingdom. So we must coexist here on earth so that we can coexist in that new kingdom. So this hate and it towards the Negroes will one day come to an end. Must come to an end. If we want to make it into that into paradise. Isaiah 60, like 14 and 15. The sons also of them that afflict thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at thy at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the most high, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas the was Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an everlasting excellence, a joy of many generations. For hundreds of years we have been fed lies, falsehoods, to make one feel superior to another. We should seek truth, we should tell truth and honesty. Truth crushed to the ground will rise again. In other words, the truth cannot be suppressed. We can only hide it for a time. It will surface again. Jeremiah 16 and 19. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come from the come unto thee from the ends of the earth. And shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. We want to be profitable. We want to be accepted by our Father. We want to hear, Well done. And again, I'm strictly talking to the Negroes. The Negroes must be awakened. They must wake up. We cannot live like the enemy. We cannot live unrighteous. We must serve our power, our God, with truth and wholeheartedness. We must live righteous. We must keep the statues, and I cannot say this enough. We must keep the statues and all our Father's commandments. We must love our brothers. We must take care of the elderly. We must take care of the, elders, the, the widows. This is a commandment the Moses has given us. We must be our brother's keeper. And doing so, 
we will make it to that new Jerusalem. The way Solomon said in his conclusion, he says, fear God and keep his commandment for it's the whole duty of man. It's our duty to serve the Most High, to fear him, to love him, and to keep his commandment. And if we do that, all that we have lost in captivity will be regained. We have already regained our God. We have regained our faith as Hebrews. And we will regain our identity. And those that hated us and those that lied and claimed that we were hermetic and we were this and we were that, will see that we are the true children of the Mosai, that he chose the Negroes, and the Negroes will live with him. Thank you. And may the Mosai bless.